up? What's up? It's your boy RC. Back at you again with the boxing 411. I know it's been a little bit. It's been, it's been a minute since I uploaded the video. But I gotta come back today, January the 10th. It's going down tonight again. It's going down with Clarissa Shields. Last time I spoke, I spoke to y'all about this upcoming fight. Clarissa Shields against uh, this chick named Has has it been? Everybody called her has been. <laughs> but Clarissa Shields has the opportunity to make boxing history. history. Be the fastest boxer to become three division world champion in all the men and women in just 10 fights. Marissa Shields is, is making his history. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to see history instead of history, history. So um, I just say more power to the quote. Power to Chris. Also on that under that on that undercard, you got uh Jerron Boots Enis against this guy never heard of before. But to be honest with you, I'ma believe I'm a, I, I, it's gonna be probably very embarrassing for this guy. This is somebody that probably shouldn't even be in the ring with Jerron Boots Enis. You know, he shouldn't be in the ring with Boots. But Boots better not play around with him because you never know. There'll be the motherfuckers you don't know about catch you off guard. And I got a feeling this could happen. He could catch Boots off guard and Boots play around with him. You know what I'm saying? Don't just go in there and take care of business. Because that's this type of fight. You know what I mean? When you look at the way he in, Boots looked at him like, like he was a, like he was like he was food for him. So it's gonna be an enjoyable night if you love boxing. Boots going there and do like you supposed to do. Take care of the business, take out the garbage. You know what I'm saying? Also, this weekend you got uh Jesse Hart fighting Joe Smith Jr. Now y'all don't, if y'all don't remember Jesse Hart, I mean, uh, Joe Smith Jr. is a guy that, uh, that knocked, um, uh, B-Hop out the ring. <laughs> that shit was epic. You know what I'm saying? You know, it was so motherfucking funny watching, uh, B-Hop fall out the ring like that. It looked like a motherfucking video game. You know what I'm saying? It just, it was just crazy. But, you know, I, I got much love for B-Hops. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Props to the OG. You know what I mean? You up in age against a young tiger like, you know, a young, a young tiger like uh, Joe Smith Jr. You know what I'm saying? He got his ass knocked out the ring. You know, no props to him to taking that challenge, taking that fight. You know, believing he still got the goods. But, uh, not with you. B-Hops should have set his ass down, but... I guess if you had to go out, you might as well went on out on top of your motherfucking head and fall out the ring. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that was a very entertaining fight. You know what I'm saying? Very entertaining. And uh, a man, Jesse Hart, he from Philly too. So I got the feeling that... Uh, Jesse Hart is coming back to get, you know, to say to get to get that, to get that, uh, to fix to settle some things. You know what I'm saying? Because he ain't like the way Joe Smith took B Hop out. You know what I'm saying? He ain't like the way Joe Smith took B Hop out by, you know, knocking him out the ring and shit. Knock the old man out the ring. Should have gave him a little bit more class than that, but. Jesse Hart got on some real shit. Told Smith he coming to get that ass for that move he did. You know what I'm saying? He said he coming to get in Smith's ass. 
But that movie did his be out. Now, I don't think Joe Smith knew what was going on. He didn't know shit was really real. Until that statement when Jesse came out of his mouth, you know, per se, you know, like, you know, he like, he coming back to set some shit straight. He coming back to set some shit straight. You know what I'm saying? So, I got a feeling that, uh, it's going to be a good ass fight on ESPN. Okay? That's ESPN. You know what I'm saying? Probably 8, 8, 8, 8, East, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern or Central. But you can see the fight for free on ESPN. That's going to be a good ass fight. I look forward to seeing that Jesse Hart versus Joe Smith. That shit going to be off the chain. You got to check that out. You know what I mean? Joe Smith was definitely one not to play with. This dude got pop. He got pop. You know, Joe Smith knock a motherfucker out. Just a harder bad motherfucker too. Just that he get reckless at time and wanna gang, he wanna bang and shit. You know, get in, you know, he don't, he don't need to get into no slug match with Joe Smith and fuck around and get clipped. He get knocked out. You don't wanna do that. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be some shit. That's gonna be some shit. And uh, I don't know if y'all heard, but Terrence Bud Crawford called Earl Spence up. They talked on the phone. They had a convo about their fight, you know. They gonna have that fight this year. You know, Bud Crawford got through the conversation from what I hear. He said that uh that Earl's a real nigga, you know what I'm saying? He's a real down ass dude. You know. And uh they reached the understanding. They gonna have that fight this year. You know what I'm saying? Also my man uh Blue Blood. You know, I saw his interview with Bob Aaron, Blue Blood's book. And uh he interviewed Bob Aaron and asked him some questions about that fight. And uh, I learned some interesting things in that little interview. You know what I'm saying? Um, Bob Aram never sent Rose Spence or uh, 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 Al Hammond, rather, a contract for no fight. Which got me kind of fucked up in the head because Terrence was, you know, talking all this, you know, shit at not too long ago, two weeks, three weeks ago, you know, uh, before Earl got into um, the accident, you know, he's talking about a contract was sent to Earl Spence, and uh, come to find out, Bob contradicted all that shit, so your boy Terrence Crawford and Bo Mack going around here telling some motherfucking stories. Telling some lies. I don't understand why the fuck they would do that. That's what fucks me up. Why? Why lie about sending a man a contract when we ain't never sent the motherfucking contract? Don't make no motherfucking sense. But, um, again, Boxing is, is, is an interesting uh, world, you know what I'm saying? Cats make up a lot of shit. You know, cats be talking a lot of cash shit, too. You did? So, you know, but either Bob line or Terrence Crawford and Bowman line. Either way, somebody has his line. That's the gossip on that. And that's what I saw out of the New Blood Sports interview with Bob Aaron. Um, get a chance, go check it out. I was going to say, um, 
I've been doing this. I haven't been doing this uh, video boxing four and one not too long, and I haven't been consistent like I would like to be. You know what I'm saying? And it just takes a little time out the day, a little more concentration, effort. But I like to not spread information out there. I like to put real information out, real content. I don't want to be on this motherfucker just blowing my mouth and blowing my horn and shit. But um, what I learned about you know this is this is this is a true statement. Motherfuckers only love you for what you can do. Mother, you know people only love winners. You know what I'm saying? People only love winners. Nobody likes losers. Name me one loser that people are celebrating or promoting or talking about. Are we? You see, that just goes to take me, that just goes to show you that. It's like my man Deontay Wild. If he wasn't a bad dude and knocking motherfuckers out, well, people really love him. You know what I'm saying? Floyd Mayweather, he talked about a good shit, but he's a really good, good, really good, really good boxer. You know, you know, I would like to have seen him against some some real good, like I would have loved to have seen Floyd Mayweather fight Vernon Forrest and how that fight would have turned out. I would have loved to have seen that shit. You know what I'm saying? But um people like Shane Mosley or Oscar De La Hoya you know when he was fighting back in the days you know you you know these were winners Mike Tyson he was a winner he had the physique he had the look and knocking motherfuckers out knocking them the fuck out not like Deontay Wilder but nevertheless Mike Tyson was that shit? Mike Tyson was the man. He's knocking motherfuckers out. You know, I love Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? Coming up, you know, that's when I was I was I was growing up on Mike. I was in high school when Mike became champ. So, uh, I looked up to Mike. When I was boxing. I even kind of mimicked some of Mike's style. But um, I noticed that about people You know they only like winners Nobody likes losers So if you don't have the ability to do something You know what I'm saying Whether it's Selling the best music, the best music Or you know the best rap songs Or, or whether it's uh, Selling the best burgers or wings You know what I'm saying If you don't have a particular skill set That you're good at and you winning that, you know what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody care less about you. So in essence, when I think about it, it's really people. They they, they only love winners. They don't love losers. But they don't got no love for just an average joke. A motherfucker out here trying to do something. They got love for a motherfucker that's out here doing something. Not a motherfucker who out here trying to do something. Because either you're doing it or you're not. If you're doing it, then people got love for you. They pump you, they promote you, they praise you. You know what I'm saying? And you could be a bad motherfucker and people just not know. You could be one of the baddest motherfuckers in the game and people just not know. You understand? You could be one of the baddest motherfuckers out here doing whatever it is that you do and people just don't know. But because they don't know and even though you introduce yourself to them or you enlighten them on your skills, you enlighten them on your skills. You know what I'm saying? 
You enlighten them on your skills, trying to put them on your game and what you're doing, but they don't know. And they get in touch with the shit you're doing or come into your world and say, man, yeah, you know, that shit is, that shit is good. That shit is right. Shit is good. You know? Oh, he can fight good. That motherfucker there, man. I like him, man. He motherfucker got 10 knockouts. Man, I like this nigga. Whoever. You know what I'm saying? He just starting out and he got 10 knockouts. Man, I like this dude. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he man, he make he make the best burgers in town, man. Nobody don't even know about it. He's sleeping on my man. Woo woo woo. You know what I'm saying? But they won't they won't really promote him as much or promote that chef, that fighter, or that musician. Because everybody else ain't talking about it. You know, they won't really promote him. So the genuine the, 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 the genuality of it all is people only like winners. People hop on board. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's just life. Fuck it, right? That's just the way it is. Don't nobody like no fucking losers. But when you look at it and put it in this perspective, everybody in some shape or form or fashion jump on bandwagons. They ride another motherfucker's Johnson. They hold another motherfucker's jockstrap. You know, because they are they, are, they admire what this person does that they can't do. And because everybody has gravi- gravitated towards that person, they admire him even more. They say, and they meet him, or he may be a down earth person, you know. They meet him, they talk to him, he may have had a couple, a couple conversations with a motherfucker. Or a few, and swear they know him. They really don't. And really don't know. But that's the way the world is. Nobody loves losers. They don't like winners. So, on that note, concentrate on being a winner. Go for yours. Win, 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 win. win all, however you got to do it, just go win. Just go win. You know what I'm saying? And, um... Maybe then people will start promoting you and putting you up, talking about you and what you do, whatever it is that you do. This is Boxing 411 with your boy RC. Holla.